College Football Week 5 Preview. Of course, the show always brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. You can sign up using the promo code NCAAF2021. It's in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It'll actually put the promo code in there for you, but it gives you 125% deposit bonus up to $2,500. Chris, my brother, it is it is good to get you in here to talk some college football. Why don't we discuss the preview for uh, for this weekend before we get into our pick and all that good stuff. But the preview, of course, I always want to ask you a few questions about the weekend coming up. Tell me this. What is the best game this weekend? I, I think it's your game. I think it's Alabama uh, Ole Miss. Last I think so. year, that yeah. weekend, it was the best game. I don't foresee it being a whole lot different. I think both these defenses are better than they were are better than they were last year. But but I don't know that they're great. I think these offenses are great. I think the offensive minds that are running these teams are great. And I think we're going to see a bunch of points. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think so as well. I, I, I will tell you this. The reason I've got it as the best game is because I think it will be the most entertaining. And that's not just because yeah. of scoring and everything else, but I think the volatility involved in this game. You're going to have two coaches that are willing to take risks in order to win this game. And that's why you can see Ole Miss winning the game outright, or you can see Alabama winning by three touchdowns. Like, there's any different number of outcomes that you can get from this because you are going to have guys like Ole Miss is, let me get this straight. I think Ole Miss is like number six in the country in third down conversion percentage, and Alabama is not great at it. So Ole Miss is going to feel a lot better about taking shots early downs and then, of course, coming in later on and just being able to clean it up if they need to. Like it, it, They feel like they can move the ball on this Alabama defense, and I don't blame them. Alabama feels like, and, and of course, there is the storyline of last year, Saban and that bunch accusing Kiffin of sign stealing. Is that going to change anything this year? I mean, it's the storylines are unbelievable with this game. So I, I think that this is absolutely the best game of the weekend. You've also got Cincinnati and Notre Dame, which storylines abound in that one as well. Brian Kelly, of course, used to coach at Cincinnati. Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame, coached at Cincinnati just last year with this entire bunch. It, it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be fun. Who knows what to make of it? And, uh, and then, of course, Arkansas and Georgia. Arkansas dealing with some some beat up guys. They've been through the ringer a little bit with that schedule, but um, who knows? I mean, I, I, Georgia hadn't really played anybody outside of Clemson, and and Clemson was able to slow their offense down. So if Arkansas has got a good enough defense, yeah, I, I think uh, I think that could be a lot of fun. Who has the most to gain this weekend? So I, I hate sticking with the same game, but I think I think Dwayne Kiffin has the most to gain. I think that I think that might be the right answer. That might be the right if answer. If they win this game, if they win this game, they they're not going to go from 13th to 8th. They should go from 13th to 2nd in the country if Georgia wins. And if Georgia loses, they should be the number 1 team in the country and nobody has an argument for why they should. They will have the best resume, it will not be close. They will be the I think they're the second or third best team in the country right now already. But you know me, I hate preseason rankings because it takes all of the preseason rankings biases into it, and you're trying to justify why you got to jump somebody. And I don't think they should have jumped anybody. I think if we don't rank anybody until week four, which is last week, and we just look at all the teams, they're a top five team to begin with. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you. I've got a couple other ones for most to gain here. Uh, I think Kentucky against Florida. Uh, Kentucky has be big. It, yeah, be that, huge. it'd be a massive, massive spot, uh, which could also put Florida on the most to lose list, but I'm, I'm not going to put them there just yet. Kentucky, if they get this win at home, they have been hyping up this new offensive coordinator, this new offensive scheme. They're throwing the ball around. They can still rely on the run with Chris Rodriguez and that bunch, but Will Levis throwing it around to, to Robinson and all those, those weapons that they've got. There's a, a chance that they – and their defense could slow down Florida's offense just enough to be able to sneak out a win at home. And if they do that, of course, you're looking at – you're starting to think about SEC East championship. If if you can get this one done, uh, you play Georgia a little later in the year, you have gone toe-to-toe with them in the past, even if you know you have not been as good and your roster is not as good. But you feel like you might be able to sneak this one out? Well, then you can certainly sneak one out against Georgia, or at least you feel like it. So Kentucky with that one, and I've got Texas against TCU. If you can get that monkey off your back that, that Gary Patterson has 
has been on the Longhorns back for so so long. Even last year, I mean, it, it, Texas lost you know thirty one to thir- uh, thirty one thirty three to them in Austin, and and should have won the game. And it's been like that multiple times. It's just a weird spot with them. TCU puts everything into that game every year. Uh, but if Texas can win that one, hey, you can start writing off the Arkansas thing as, hey, you know what? We didn't have the right quarterback. Now we got the right quarterback. Everything looks good. So it, we'll, we'll see All about right. that. So, so, hang on. so I, I want to address them. Is it going to be you or me that's responsible for reminding us next year, the week before TCU plays Texas, bet bet against them, lay the points, <laughs> or, or take the points and bet against them? I I'm don't a- know. <laughs> I don't know that they have won the game the week before they played Texas. And if they have won in the past, they haven't covered. They've looked terrible every year the week before. I've gone back and looked at it. Almost every week before they played Texas, they look like crap. And then they, they get this monster number against Texas, or a bigger number than probably what they should get because the last time you saw them on the football field, they looked like garbage. And, and, then, they, and then they beat Texas straight up. Like, yeah, like, can yeah. we please make a middle note that no matter who they play, if they got UConn the week before, we're betting UConn, damn it. Well, I mean, if, if you remember, I did bet SMU last week. <laughs> I know that, but you didn't do it because of this. No, it wasn't you because, did it of, because that. of you. You did it because of logic and reasoning. Let's not throw that crap out of the window. Okay. Yeah, logic and reasoning does not matter in this match. As a matter of fact, that's that's what's going to open up our pick'em. So we'll we'll jump off that game for just a minute. And we'll talk a little <laughs> more about it momentarily. But uh, but the most to lose, I, I will go on and open with this. I think Oregon against Stanford has the most to lose. Uh, Oregon has not looked like you know a top five team other than against Ohio State, and even then it was only for about what three quarters maybe, and they didn't do anything ultra impressive. They just figured out what Ohio State couldn't stop and just ran it over and over, and eventually the clock ran out on Ohio State. If Oregon loses this game to Stanford, that's their gimme. That's it. That's all they got. And and then you start to lose a lot of uh, public faith in, in the Ducks. So I I think that Oregon might be the team with the most to lose this weekend. So I'm, I'm trying to stay away from just the same big games. Also the most to win, obviously could be Cincinnati because if we have chaos, if for some reason Alabama finds himself with a loss and, and nobody wants to put him in the playoff, Clemson and Ohio State somehow get taken out of this mix and Penn State and, and, and Iowa beat themselves up and knock themselves out of it, Cincinnati's got a shot to make the playoffs, okay? So that's a that's a one to win. The, the most to lose, there's a world – like I don't think Georgia's going to lose, but I think if Georgia loses to Arkansas, I think it's a big deal because – now we look at the resume and we say, who's he beating? Because Clemson could end up with this thing with four losses. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like who the hell have you beaten on your schedule? And if the East begins to cannibalize itself, now the only good team you played from the West, you know, just beat you. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think that could hurt them pretty bad. Kirby Smart's always due for a, for a big loss in the middle of the season, but usually it comes at the hands of somebody that, you know, a 20-point dog to them will – Lo and behold, there's a damn 19 point number. Okay. Like it's an undefeated team on the other side, and everybody thinks they're pretty good, but, but for some reason, the, the books don't. So I think, I think they've got a hell of a lot to lose. The other team, with, with the quarterback for Kansas State being out, I don't think they can lose, but it's, it's Oklahoma. If Oklahoma loses to Kansas State, especially without their starting quarterback, I, I think that's a damn shame. They should fall like a rock. This cannot be a situation where they just fall up some points. They they need to, they need to drop. They need to drop like a hammer because yeah. they have not looked impressive at all a single week this year. Texas A and M. I've got is another one for most to lose. Uh, as Ooh, far as right. air, if Mississippi State goes in there, yeah. beat them. Woo! Oh, but, yeah. think think about that fan base. Like, don't I'm not worried about national uh, perception, anything like that. What I'm thinking is. Jimbo just signed this massive contract extension right before the season started. He gets into conference play. Yeah, he lost his quarterback, but my gosh, you should be able to beat, you know, Mississippi State. Arkansas is a lot better than anybody expected. But you lose at home to Mississippi State on a Saturday night the week before Alabama comes in. You're sitting at three and two, and, and you may not be ranked. I mean, it, like you got the CBS primetime game next week, and that, that could be a massive one. For playoff sleepers, I got a couple of options. Do you have any, or, or you want me to jump in first? 
Well, I mean, I guess I'm not a sleeper at Cincinnati. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the that's the answer. Well, what, um, what, hey, what about think, hold on? What about the other side of that matchup? Notre Dame. I was just going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> Notre Dame could be a playoff sleeper because a lot of people picked them to not be pretty good this year. I told you I thought they were going to be just fine. Now they're not as good as they were last year, but they beat Cincinnati. They're still undefeated, and and you know, I I, I definitely think the. I was worried about Wisconsin. They got through Wisconsin. I was worried about Cincinnati. If they get through Cincinnati, we were worried about, uh, you know, North Carolina at one point in time. They got them right on schedule. Don't know that I'm worried about that anymore. Like, there's a couple of these ACC teams that, that they got on schedule that don't scare me as much as they, they used to. I, I certainly agree. I agree 100%. And you know what I like about Notre Dame right now? Everybody's looking at these numbers, you know, these these efficiency numbers for Notre Dame. But if you'll go back and watch what they've done, Marcus Freeman has not played really the same defense in any game. He has adapted his nope. defense to fit every single opponent, and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of effort to be able oh, to do that. And you got to be super smart. I'm telling you, there's there's one man on the planet that does that, and that name is Bill Belichick. Oh yeah, he's the he's the only person alive coaching football that changes his game plan one hundred percent week in and week out. Yeah, this is this is very interesting. What what Notre um, Dame's doing defensively is very impressive. Oh, very, very much so. Very impressive. Even even if the efficiency numbers don't say that it is, it is still incredibly impressive for what they are getting accomplished. I mean, it's just unreal. Like they they've legit. And if got anybody, a if anybody you think, if anybody you think has the 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 the, the cheat code to try to slow down Desmond Ritter and 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 this run game for Notre Dame for uh, Cincinnati. I, I think it's him, right? I mean, oh, he's got to know. He's got to know that team inside and out. Yes, a hundred percent. He knows all the weaknesses. He knows where the bodies are buried in Cincinnati for sure. Let's see. The other one that I've got here is is Texas as a playoff sleeper. Everybody kind of wrote them off when they lost uh, to Arkansas, but they made that quarterback change late in that Arkansas game. I mean, Casey Thompson took him down the field a couple of times and was really having success once the game was already well in hand for the Hogs. But they have looked unbelievable on offense. Casey Thompson is running Steve Sarkeesian's offense perfectly. I mean, just to perfection right now. If they do it again against TCU and they start rolling through, remember we got uh, Red River next week. We got all kind of stuff. If they can get through this week against TCU and next week against Oklahoma, yeah, there's other teams that could beat them in the Big 12. But I think at that point, you got to be the Big 12 favorite and you got a chance to, to get back into the playoff conversation, even if. You are Texas, and we don't expect it out of you, right? Man, I don't know. I'm not getting the, a lot of crap. It's got to go bad for you to get me to agree to a one loss Big Twelve title right now. Oh, I understand. I mean, I mean, I mean, I need a lot to go bad. Well, I will tell you this: I talked last week about Baylor as a playoff sleeper, and and they got the upset over Iowa State. So, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with Texas. They've got a lot of talent. They've got, I mean, it takes a lot. For a first year coach to that get everybody. That lost Arkansas was bad, though, man. That oh, lost it, Arkansas was real bad. It was, but if you can blame they, that they away. Need Arkansas to have a, they need Arkansas to have a. They need Arkansas to beat Georgia. So that loss doesn't look so bad. Yeah, but the, the, you can you can blame it away on a freshman quarterback, right? Like, you can find a way to blame that thing away. And it, it's excuse making for sure, but. And I'm not making the excuse for them. That's what they will say. And there's there's a world in which you can get Oregon beat because they haven't looked like world beaters. You can find a way back into this playoff conversation for sure. So that's my two sleepers there were Notre Dame and Texas this year, which under normal circumstances would not be sleepers, but both of these are ranked outside of the top ten. You know, I'd, yeah, I yeah. Think- well, I'm a t- I mean, I, I guess my sleeper, I don't see him as a sleeper because I think they're improperly ranked to begin with. That's Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame is is the third best team in, in the country, and I mean not Notre Dame, sorry, Ole Miss. I think they're the third best team in the country, Gary. Yes, and and that's why I don't I don't know how to call them a sleeper because I don't think they're a sleeper. I think the rest of the country just refuses to give them the credit that they deserve because they still see Lane Kiffin. I mean, you heard the Mike Wilbon rant. They oh, yeah. they forget that a decade has gone by. You know, they oh, forget yeah. that ten years has gone by. And, and 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 so they still judge him for stuff he did with the Raiders. God, that was like fifteen years ago, man. Yes, yes, it's just so, it's unreal. So, I mean, what do you do? Like they still see Ole Miss as a little old Ole Miss Mississippi program. 
you know, they're, they're, they're little old fun teams. Sometimes in the West, they give Alabama problems. But other than that, they're not a threat to anybody. And that's just wrong. It's just, it's just wrong. Yeah, no, you, you're stop right. This. Uh, There's zero chance there are 13 teams in the country better than them. Uh, I, bet, Vegas, I, bet the books, yeah. I bet the books would have them favored over all but four of those teams on a neutral site field right now today. Vegas has them power rated uh, number five or number six in the country. Bam. That's exactly what I thought. They'd, yeah. be, they'd be a top five team in Vegas. Book. They, they would be favored over everybody but maybe four teams. And that's it. And I'll tell you this. I'll take them sprinkled with a little bit of money line against all four of those teams right now. Yeah, yeah, I can. I, I'm with you. I'm with you, 100. percent So that I guess that's my sleeper. If you're talking about a team that's ranked 13th in the country, I just think that ranking it's, is it's just not a bad dead wrong. It's not a bad sleeper. Uh, after Alabama, they've got Arkansas next. You know, they still got to play Liberty. They got to play LSU, Auburn. Like their entire schedule is still in front of them. But a lot of these teams, not as scary as they looked when it was just a name on a piece of paper early in the season, right? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.